let's take a look together of an example using Doppler effect. So the question we're going to look at is that we have a source that's emitting a frequency of 100 hertz, and we have it and an observer moving towards each other. So we have two things moving, and each of them have the same speed of 100 meters per second. So as if the sound is 300, or if the speed of sound is 340 meters per second, then the observer hears uh, the sound with what frequency? Let's draw a picture of this. So I have my little person and I have my source. So this is my observer and my source, and they're going to move towards each other with the same uh, same speed. So they move towards each other while this one emits sound. And we want to know how does this observer hear? What sound does it hear? Is here. Well, since we're using both a source and an observer that are moving, we're going to use the full Doppler equation and has all the pieces in it. So we have the speed of sound in two places, the velocity or the speed of the observer and the speed of the source, and the original frequency, the unmoving frequency. And we have to remember too that our signs associated with it are positive if they're traveling towards each other and negative if they're traveling apart. So by looking at this last little bit, it implies that the velocity or the speed of the observer is a plus value when we substitute it in, and the speed of the source is a plus value when we move it in because they're both moving towards each other. So let's substitute things in. So I'm just going to rewrite this equation with substituting everything in. So I start going through, I have my original velocity, my speed of sound velocity, the observer is moving towards it at 100 meters per second, I divide that by the speed of sound minus, you get this minus sign here, but it's a positive 100 meters per second because the source is moving towards the observer. And we multiply this whole fraction by a thousand hertz. So reduce this, this is 340 plus 100 gives me 440, and 340 minus 100 gives me 240. So, and I still get the 100, I do one more, or sorry, the 1000 hertz. So I divide these two together, give me, gives me 8.3, or 1.83, the units drop, and I'm 1.83 times 1,000 hertz, or 1,830 hertz. So our 1,000 hertz original signal is actually going to be observed to be almost a full octave higher at 1,830 hertz. Uh, if it was 2,000, it would be an octave higher. So our final answer is 1,830 hertz. And again, just to kind of review, just used Doppler, our Doppler equation, and we had our observer moving towards the source, or we had our source moving towards the observer, so we get two positive signs here, we get the positive from there and the negative because it's part of the equation, substituted everything in, and got our final answer. So kind of a fun little uh, question. A lot of times you won't actually see this complicated. Sometimes the observer is not moving. Sometimes the source is stationary. So if you're standing on the road and you hear an ambulance go by, you're stationary, so you have zero velocity. But the ambulance may have a high velocity. Or if you're driving in a car and you're hearing a bell ring outside, then you may be moving and the source may be stationary. But they all get solved the same way.